right, all right. I know I could barely contain my excitement, but we do have to settle down here and actually talk about something. We have a couple boards here, uh, three in particular. And these boards are pretty cool. They're, you know, nothing too crazy, but uh, as you can tell from my uh, not so gentle opening marks, I've already been in this package. Though there is one module that I've saved just for you and I to do today. This is the stepper motor control. Though I wanted to talk about something that I thought was really interesting about what I received from JLC PCB. Now I have to admit, this is actually a first for me. I have never done a paste application before. I have the equipment that I think will be necessary. I have the solder paste, I've got the spatulas. I don't know if the plastic spatula was really the right move, but I already have some metal ones. I've seen people go either way. I just liked the idea of the plastic one. Like, it's nice and flexible. It's still got a nice sharp point. We'll see. I'll try it. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but that's not really the interesting part. The interesting part is what I received from JLC PCB. First of all, you know, when I received this package, my first thought was, oh no. <laughs> this is the perfect example of why Americans should not use the metric system. <laughs> I looked at the ordering options for the solder stencils from JLC PCB and I just checked the smallest one. I was like, yeah, that'll be fine. And I got this package in the mail and I was like, oh no, it's, this is the size of my board. <laughs> And this is the size of my stencil. Okay, uh, mistake number one. But let's really get into this. You can see that what we have is a <clears throat> reasonably high quality looking stencil that has all the pads you would expect. So that's pretty cool. And you can see they, you know, they're both pretty similar. They've got a lot of the same attributes, but there's some hidden detail underneath the stencil. This gives us just a little bit of insight into how JLC PCB manufactures things. Because what they used as their packing material is apparently a backer for when they're drilling PCBs. You can see all these tiny little holes from assembling something or other. And it seems like when they're done using this to drill out PCBs, they chop it up and use it to ship out comically large stencils. So that's pretty cool. And let's use this thing. Let's use this solder stencil. First, I just need to figure out which one goes with my board. It's usual these look darn good. No complaints, really. They have reasonably flat surface finish. That doesn't look quite right. I'd expect that cluster of components. Yeah, yeah, that's that part right there. It's not square underneath. Okay, so let's grab the other stencil. Let's see what we can see. Does this one look more correct? Yep, this one looks more correct, I think. Okay, this seems like the right stencil. And now I'm really not setting myself up for success here. <laughs> Trying to do a paste application on such a large thing. This is going to be a problem. That is just too cool. Something about just the pattern here. It's just so neat. Okay, whatever. Mo moving on. The stencil is lined up with the board. You can see how you just see shiny metal everywhere. Some of that metal is the stencil. Some of that is the board. Now, if I flip this up, you can see I just have the board kind of taped in place. If I were doing more than one, I would put some boards in here that I could push up against and tape there. This tape is a little bit too close to the pads for my liking. Like, there'll be a little bit of gap that's one kept on tape thickness. But this should at least be good enough for our first try stenciling. I'll get this set up and we'll try to stencil it, I guess. So I have the paste. I have everything that I need. Let's see how this paste looks. All right, looks fine. They've got some kind of a thing in there. I'm not sure how important that is. 
I'll probably put it back in because I don't know what it's there for. Just need to pull off this protective film. I appreciate the protection, but I feel like I'm about to punch something. I have to pull so hard. This must be made out of like spring steel or something. It seems pretty resilient. Oh man, that cling stuff is crazy. All right, gonna bring it down. Okay, it still looks aligned. That's a very good thing. Peel off protector number two. Okay, this side looks a little roughed up. I don't know if one side versus the other is supposed to be down. Well, I guess I know one side versus the other is supposed to be down because this would be mirrored if I had it any other way. So, there we go. Looks like I'll be dragging across like that. Let's give it a go. That looks delicious. I went for a, I believe it's a T4 paste. That has to do with the uh, ratio of something to something else. Uh, did a little bit of research. Particle size is a factor. I can't get this thing into the paste. I need a spatula for my spatula. All right, whatever. I'll be back. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is the ideal paste application method. <laughs> I got a piece of aluminum foil, and I just folded it a whole bunch. So I'll take this, get a good dollop of paste, and then I, I used that to spread a bead kind of along this edge, just like that. There we go, that edge. Now, in theory, I just put this down. I apply like a firm sort of pressure, kind of at an angle like that. Oh, I stopped too soon. Okay, let's try that again. Let's do a second pull. And that should be it. Lifting this carefully. Should leave some paste. Stuck to the board on every pad. Oh, sure enough. Oh, that looks so cool. Some of those are really neat. Okay, now I'm in kind of a weird predicament. Um, so now I've got this board stuck down. I need to get it out without destroying the work I just did. That was cool. I was a little bit nervous about the uh, finer pitch pads. Okay, hello. I have nothing I can push against. There's solder paste everywhere I look. Okay. I guess first thing first, let's clean up our stencil. It's kind of like the opposite. Just don't want to be wasteful. That was a ton of paste. That's pretty good. I got a lot of the paste off. About that much. Just come back to the container. Scrape that off. The inside. There we go. And just put their little thing back on. And there we go. I'll go wash my hands and... Call that a win. Stencil success. As someone who has never done this before, I am absolutely blown away. Like, that stencil pattern that I used is just the default in KiCad. I didn't do any tuning. I didn't consider the like size of a particular pad or the thickness of the stencil. I just went default stencil thickness from JLC PCB, default aperture in KiCad. And that's what we got. Like there is paste, maybe not the right amount, but there is paste on every single pad. So what are we gonna do about it? Let's install some parts. Okay, I have the bomb pulled up. I have everything kind of ready to go. 
we are going to start with the 0.1 microfarad capacitors. There should be 16 of these in the design. All right, let's just go down the list. C4. There it is. C5. It's a little sticky. It's awesome. And C7. Pretty sure it's just every cap that is that size. C10. Yeah. C13. C8. Yep. 20, 21, and 22. All the same. 23. C18 and C19, C15, C7, C6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We're only missing one. Oh, where are you? All right, whatever. We'll just come back to it if we have to. Just going to put on the big obvious ones. Holy cow, got a lot of these. It says eight. I need to 3D print a new funnel. I seem to have misplaced my old one. <laughs> that makes loading these into the test tubes pretty much impossible. Okay. Got an R2. There's an R7. There it is. 22. 23. There you are. There is a 25, 26, 28, and 30 are the final parts. They're all over here. Okay, there they are. Found all of those. Got the 10K resistors next. We need nine of these. Okay, let's do it. 10K resistors. Starting with R1. What a beautiful reference designator. R1. There is R6. Hell, it's 8, 9, 10, and I just found 10. There's 11. That's one of those as well. Beauty. R8. There it is. R19. There it is. R24. Connected to the big cap next to it. Mm, mm, mm. There you are. Excellent. All are found. Going down the list, we've got the 100 mil ohm. These are nice and big. Nice and obvious. We need four for this board. Uh, yeah, it's the four giant obvious pads. Okay, there they are. I need some of these giant caps. These are the 2.2 mic, 100 volt. There's two of them in this design. Looks like C1 and C2. There goes C1 and C2. Got the 4.7 mic 0805s next. Yeah, I know in the previous video I said I didn't want one of those open PNP machines. <laughs> yeah! I'm not going to be doing this if we sell these boards. Not a chance. This takes forever. I'll do it one off for myself. I think this is, this might, if this actually works well, this might be faster than hand building the board. I'd estimate it'd take about four hours for me to hand build this one. Got a C14, is that on my list? Yep. C11, an 0805 can't really hide. Or can it? Oh, I already have five on. One, two, three, four, five. How did I take out six parts and not realize it? Yep. All right. That's what I get for looking for the sixth part when there's only five. Okay, we need a thousand picofarad. I don't have that with me right now. All right, we'll start with the tiny TVS. 
Assuming that's D1. Yes, it is. Then we'll put on our standard diode. One will clamp in a reverse voltage situation. And our gigantic diode TVS on the motor input. There we go. Oh, I just got to place our PTC F2. That's a lot of lines done. R14, 10 ohm. All right, so we got to get our 10 ohms. There are four. Okay, we got an R14. We've got an R5. I just need to find R20 and R21. R21. Okay, found one. Yes, right there. Oh, I think I found that last capacitor we needed. Yep. Okay, that seems to be all of the passives except for the diode. Let's get this thing installed. I can reflow it. That'll be cool. Okay, but first, we need some silicon. We've got the Cypress piece sock. That thing's worth its weight in gold at the moment. Carefuling. Okay, that was terrifying. Oh, good. Part fell out of the aesthetic bag. So it was good for my sanity, but we do need one of them. So let's grab it. This is the TI voltage regulator. Goes down just like so. Looks beautiful. Time for the stepper motor driver. Yeah, you can see that we actually remembered the thermal pad on this part. That's always a good feeling when you look at <laughs> the requirements of a chip. You're like, hey, we're actually treating this one right. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I forgot the thermal pad on the, uh, the other motor driver. Such an obvious thing. Pin one is right over there. Okay. The part is in the paste. Time for the RS-45 transceiver. This one just has a ton of paste on it. That ought to be fine. Beautiful. Okay, I'm going to go grab the 1000 picofarad and an LED. We're going to bring this downstairs, and I want to show you the reflow process. So let's cut over, let's reflow this board, and let's, let's finish it off. We have a board. <laughs> there it is. You can see it. Great. I need to add two parts. So we're going to try the same reflow profile that we did last time. All right. We're up at 170. We're going to go for 270 because that's easy to set. Okay, that is not a flat... S no! Ah, I just hit the parts. Stupid. That's back into place. That's what I get for adjusting it. That's on me, not on it. I basically just wait. I can see the flux activating. And I have a little thing to set it on to cool when we get there. Okay. Parts are starting to flow. I can see when half of the board is flowed, another half is 
Not quite. We're almost there. That is cool. All right, I'm gonna have to reflow one part or fix one part, but in general, we're there. Time to pull it off. For a first reflow. First time using solder paste. First time using a solder stencil. First time making this design. Oh, when you reflow something that good, it just brings out this joy. Oh my goodness. It was not perfect. I think I need to touch up three parts and we'll be good. So I'm about to do that. First thing we got to do, there's a cap that is like super wonky because there's no solder on the pad because some guy may have kind of nudged it the wrong direction. Cool. Now I gotta get some solder on the little pad without wiping 15 components off the board. Okay, some solder, clean it off. Let's get this guy moved. Hello? Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Cool. Have those two straightened out. This one's a little solder starved. The part that I kind of knocked off. So just add a touch more there. Other than that, and we're looking pretty good. I don't see any tombstone parts. This one looks a little, looks a little cold. Add a touch more solder there. Fuse looks a little cold on that corner too. That board, or this piece of the board wasn't in contact directly, so that happens. Cool, all right, let's do a quick sanity check. I don't see any obvious shorts or opens, but let's just uh, check all the rails. Uh, so we want to check. There to there, open, there to there, open. Cool, the five volt output to ground. Looks good. Motor input to ground. Looks good. If we switch over to diode mode, got a diode in one direction, not the other. Diode in the backwards direction. Oh no. And the forward? We're gonna have to check that out. That doesn't seem right. Well, there actually are a couple shorts over here. Okay, uh, I will clean those up real quick. They don't look too, too bad. I can probably just resolve them with a little application of flux. That one is resolved. That one's not quite one more. I think we'll be there. There we go. That is one of the most beautiful solder jobs I've ever seen on a micro. Love it. Let's check that 5 volt rail again. That is freaking me out. There we go. All the pads are soldered in. There we go. It's done. Just got to clean off some flux and we are good to go. Reflow is fun. With a pick in place, I think we could do some damage. Without a pick in place, I think it's safe to say that we will be ordering any boards that we sell. 
because holy cow, that sucked. Manually placing all those parts was a lot of work. But it really wasn't so bad. Just the simplicity of placing everything, using your stencil, and being able to trust that you're going to get a reliable solder joint. That is the best part of this process. Being able to go through in bulk all at once, solder it all together, absolutely awesome. Worth every penny. I stand by my decision to send back the other one for not getting hot enough. Claim to do 400, couldn't even get to 250. That's what the, uh, the old rework station did. This one claims 400 and it would probably light itself on fire if you went above 300, but it doesn't really matter because you only need to go to 250. There you go. Now there's only one thing to do. We gotta get this back upstairs. We gotta actually test it. And I have a feeling this is gonna be really cool. I think this is gonna work. We've got the motor output, the encoder input, the power input, got the programming port, I've written a little bit of code, I've done as much as I think we can do today, and I am very excited to showcase where we're at. Obviously, you see a motor. This is a brushed DC motor. We've seen this one before. So this is a little adapter board. I don't know if we've ever even talked about this. It allows for using... Well, this is an FTDI module. That's a TX enable line, so this can talk RS-45. We can use this to talk Modbus. But it also has a power entry point. So we've got some alligator clips coming from a lab power supply, and that provides the power which is sent down that RJ port. So let's grab our first cable. Now we have power and communication back to the computer. Okay, what do we do with the other end? Well, let's grab our first motor module. This is a brushed DC motor module. Motor plus goes on that side. That connects both power and the encoder signaling. So now we have control. We have all the motor power going. Never mind why there's two sets of wires. Okay. So now we take the brushed DC motor module. Plug it in. And it, there we go. And it starts doing stuff. Spitting out some stuff on the serial port as well. Pretty cool. It starts spinning. Well, now what ha happens when we introduce our little stepper motor that we just reflowed? Well, we have the programming module. I snapped this off one of their dev kits. We're using this as a programmer because the dev kit cost a tenth of the price of the real programmer and I've yet to find a functional difference. So there we go. So you just plug it in over here, plug it into your computer and boopity boppity, you've got a programmed board. I use one of these USB A to A extender cables that works really, really well. Enough playing around, grab that. We've got our motor power and let's use this here stepper motor. It's just a little tape flags. You can actually tell if or when it's rotating. And I've made this little cable. Not my finest crimp work. It ought to get the job done. So we bring the motor cable around. Plug that into the board. Very good. The motor is now connected. Now if I connect the power and the data it now starts doing its thing. And you might be saying, well, why is it not doing anything? Well, thankfully, because this thing gets really hot and I haven't totally figured out heat sinking yet. There are thermal vias, but it just burns a lot of power. I set the current limit pretty high. 
I think we need to turn that down. But this thing's UVLO threshold is 15 volts. This one is meant for 12. It can handle 15, but this motor's rated for 12. I'm kind of scared, but I've only got one lap supply plugged in, so at the risk of burning something up, I guess I'll just do it. Also, this thing's loud as heck, so I'm going to pick it up. And there we go. We're off to the races. We now have two motor modules. Oh, goodness. Yeah, that is so hot. <laughs> because stepper motors drive a constant current through the windings. Oh man, that stepper driver gets so hot so fast. I'm kind of regretting not using one of those like stepper module pin compatible things that you can just drop in. That may have been wise, because then you could use like a silent stepper or upgrade it or do what you want to do with it. And you could have like piggybacked it over a hard P sock. That might have been a good idea. I might need to think about that in Rev 2. But at any rate, we can move a stepper. And, I mean, you know how much I love teasing stuff, so... I'm not saying. I'm just saying. I'm pretty excited about this. And this is just a proof of concept, right? We don't have any control, right? just running the stepper loop or the stepper motors even running open loop I have the encoder input I'm just not using it right now but it is so cool to me oh goodness that is so loud isn't that fun Oh goodness, that serial port is spitting out garbage. Hot garbage. Can't imagine why. It's only a little bit of electrical noise. <laughs> I probably had two modules trying to talk at the same time. Okay, yes, this thing needs a lot of refinement, but it's a start. I have to do some code. We need to get some more refinement here. I think I've said that about 15 times. But the motor spin, the encoder feedback works. We have a stepper driver. We have two P-Socks. I have one code base that's controlling two different sets of motors, and I can do a better job of linking them, but we have a motor controller platform. And I have a way to hook up a microcontroller to automate and try to coordinate and send commands to multiple motors. And this thing should allow daisy chaining. So in theory, I can just keep adding motors and it should just keep working. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Reflow success, mission success. Uh, let's see if I can write some software magic to make this thing go from kind of cool to just absolutely incredible. I hope you learned something great today. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for staying till the end. And a special thank you to all of you who have supported us through any means, through uh, being a Patreon supporter or a YouTube channel member. I really appreciate the extra step you guys have taken to support us directly. also want to thank you, all of you who comment, share what we do with others, uh, leave a like on a video. It's really awesome to see this community grow, and that just can't happen without you. So thank you. Yeah, hope you enjoyed. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs> Nothing like holding an hour of your work in your hands while you go down a flight of stairs. Okay.